Plutus is too difficult. It will never work. Well, do you guys want to talk about Plutus? Do, do, do you guys really want to talk about Plutus? Do you want to have the Plutus conversation? Well, fuck it. Let's have the Plutus conversation. Let me just open up my whiteboard here. Okay. My Microsoft whiteboard is configuring. And I got to change my background. What are we going to do here? Well, you know, I'm going to get a little, little, little bit of rainbow pen right there. Yeah, nice little rainbow pen. And I'm going to enhance my ink shapes. And I'm going to format my background. Put a little square grid on that. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, okay. So let's talk about it. Share screen. Hold on to your hats. Hold on to your butts. All right, let's open this shit up. And here we go. All right. So the question is, Plutus is too difficult. Plutus, Plutus evil, Plutus hard, must go other language. Okay. So back in the day in 2017, we had this idea, and I, I wrote it in the paper, and I called it Cardano SL. I may have even written this paper, Why Cardano, in 2016. I'm not sure. It was a long time ago, and I'm getting old and fat. All right, so Cardano SL, and I also introduced this concept of Cardano CL. So back in the day, what I wanted to do was have an ultra-fast, secure and uh, somewhat limited settlement system uh, so that would be multi-asset so we invented a new accounting model for that called extended utxo and we also created the cardano native asset standard and we did some research into two different programming languages. One was Plutus, and the other one was Marlowe. So the idea behind extended UTXO was that this gave us the ability to go off-chain, on-chain really quickly and have good proof properties. We also thought about things like determinism. And we thought about things like parallelism. So we really wanted to have a high degree of, of stuff happening all at the same time. Native assets that was inspired from color coins. Uh, that was an old Bitcoin concept. And Plutus and Marlowe. Marlowe, I always imagine, is the asset transfer language. So basically something that would stick around and allow you to move assets around. And Plutus was kind of like this connecting tissue. Uh, so the idea is that Plutus would allow you to build all the bridges so that you could connect to much more complicated and expressive systems in the layer two. Sidechain. Okay. So here's what happened. Fast forward to 2023. We learned actually how to make Plutus general purpose and sufficiently expressive that you could actually match pretty closely the EVM and solidity. Frustratingly closely, but there are still some issues here and there. Okay, well, this is evolving quite a bit, and it is now possible to build stuff on Cardano that would be equivalent to what people built on Ethereum. Well, the thing is that all the innovations happening over here in the layer two you know, look at uh, Coinbase upgrading Ethereum, look at Polygon. And, you know, uh, Seba from DC Spark very accurately pointed out that it's much more exciting this side because you have infinite possibilities. When you look at the CL model, here you want to have some sort of fast binding layer that provides security to everybody. So that's fast. And then all this is where you do your experimentation. So one of the strategies we've been looking at is if you think about Plutus, you have Plutus, the surface language, and that looks a lot like Haskell, and you have Plutus core. That's system F omega with some type magic. Okay, and so your surface lang, uh, that looks a lot like Haskell, and that compiles to core. So one of the things we've been thinking about is can we highly optimize core and the compilation tooling, but then 
uh, go ahead and promote the creation of lots of good surface languages. So you have Plutus Core, and then you'll have languages like, uh, I think it's Aiken is one, and you have all these other languages. Marlowe is another one. Okay. And basically, these are built around for developer accessibility. or bespoke domains. Okay, now these could be community led and financed through rent programs um, or small, uh, highly incentivized teams. And then the core can be in the engine room and basically work on making this more efficient. Now, there's precedent for this model. And that precedent comes from uh, Java. So if you look at Java, Back in the old days, it was the surface language. Everybody knew it, everybody used it. What's happened is they do a lot more work these days on the Java virtual machine. And instead you have a bunch of languages that compile to it like Scala and uh, Kotlin. Then you have uh, Cloture, you have Julia and all these other languages that compile to it. And they have big ecosystems, they do lots of things. And the JVM effectively is just kind of the back end. And these are much more developer friendly and user friendly than anything in the Java syntax. So it may be the case that this is a superior model. What I wanted to do back in the day is, is I always imagined that what was going to happen is that we'd build this great layer. And then on the smart contracting side, we had this concept of the island, the ocean, the pond, and we had something called the K framework. And the concept there is that if you, you, you got the formal semantics of a language in K, that through a process called semantics based compilation, K would be able to actually uh, build auto magically all of your tooling to connect your language to the core. And then you'd also get your formal methods and your debugger and interpreters and, you know, basically everything you'd ever want in a framework. And so we put millions and millions of dollars into exploring this. This was done out of University of Illinois Urbana Champaign by Grigori Rochu. <laughs> And we learned a lot. We even created something called Yella. And we thought about even deploying Yella as a specific side chain of, with this Cardano SL model. But we never could get it to work at a level that would make sense for Cardano in this generation. And it makes me sad because that was actually my favorite approach. And I felt that gave everybody what they wanted because it was very simple. You just do a K semantics for any programming language. And then suddenly you automatically support that language. So anyway, Marlow is evolving quite nicely. Next month hits mainnet. Um, Plutus has it's in its second version right now, and people are really starting to dig into it, and the tooling is getting dramatically better. You guys really know the native asset model and extended UTXO model pretty well, so we're starting to see a lot of good community built around core. And what I imagine is going to happen is the surface lang and core is really going to become the formal methods path over time for that plus uh, the binding infrastructure, which is what we really wanted it to be. Okay, so Hydra, you know, the sidechain smart contracts, these types of things. And then what needs to happen is that we need to get these high accessibility surface languages, which developers really enjoy, uh, and get those supported, meaning get some grants there. And we certainly can put some in, and the MBO can put some in, and Catalyst can continue to put some in, and the foundation can put some in, like the foundation's been funding Aiken. And I think that's how we, we kind of get where we need to go in terms of developer accessibility. So I agree that Plutus can be too difficult for a class of people, especially when it has certain restrictions, but you have to understand that there's some philosophical reasons why people do that. And everything changes very quickly. And I think we're starting to converge to a development model that's working for everybody. It's going to take a little bit more time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>